This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar presenting Apple Final Cut Pro Power Tips. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. Chroma Key allows us to make specific colors in a video image transparent. In this short video tutorial, I'll show you different ways to use Chroma Key, which is also called a green screen key, to create useful video effects. A chroma key filter selects a specific range of colors and makes them transparent. We're used to working with green because it works really well with film the way that blue works really well with video. But we really could use any color we want, green, blue, red, purple, as long as it's not in the foreground object, the background color specifically doesn't make any difference. What makes a chroma key work is to have an even background lighting, very smooth, 50% on the waveform monitor, and keep the green as specific as possible. You don't want shadows, you don't want ripples, you don't want light and dark suctions, you don't want desaturation. You want to have it be a richly saturated color around 50% on the waveform monitor. Let me show you some examples of chroma key. In this example, from the digital production buzz, I wanted to have a dialogue with somebody on the monitor. The problem is, is that when you put video on a monitor, most often it doesn't look very good. It looks much better if you can chroma key the video into the monitor. Well, the video that I want to chroma key is this animated logo. I use this for the teaser for my podcast, the digital production buzz. So I want to put that inside my monitor. How are we going to do that? Open up the effects browser, scroll down to the keying category, and drag the keyer on top of this clip, the one with the green screen. Now I just need to get the backstage clip to fit in the monitor. To do that, select the transform setting. Let's make this just a shade smaller. And let's just transform that so it's about the size of the monitor. There we go. And click Done. And now when I play it, I've got that animated logo looking like it's playing on the monitor. Well, let's try something a little bit different. We've got a dialogue between Lisa and Andrew, and I need to put them in an office space. So let's supply the keyer. And it automatically knocked out the green, but look at how much garbage I've got here. I've got lighting stands. I ran out of the green screen. How are we going to fix it? Select the chroma key clip, go to crop, click the arrow, go to crop, and just crop in the foreground picture to get rid of the garbage, and click Done. The problem is the still image behind is the wrong size, so click the still image, go up to the video inspector, go all the way down to spatial conform and set it to fill, and it expands that shot to fill. Now, as we look at this in more detail, look at the top of Lisa's head. Notice that black bar there. It's a little bit too severe. So to get rid of that, we'll select the top clip, go to the video inspector, go to the chroma key, and twirl down matte tools, and we'll just shrink that by, oh, one or two pixels. And notice now that I've got that black line is missing. Now, it's still a problem because the background is in focus, so we'll select the background, we'll go to blur, and we'll apply a Gaussian blur to the background, and make it a little less intense. And make it feel soft so our cast stands out. And then finally, we'll go to the color board, color wheels, and let's just pump this up a bit. There we go. So they're doing their acting in front of a still image of the background, which I've blurred slightly to give us the depth of field. And we have a very nice looking key. Here's another example. I wanted to put two separate pieces of video in one in each of the monitors. How do I do that? 
well, I've only got one color green on both. Select the clip. Go to the keying, apply the keyer. Let's select this first clip and go to transform. And let's just scale that down. Don't want to turn it. Here we go. That's done. And then go here. Again, transform. We'll scale it smaller. Rotate it so it fits. Smaller. Okay, except the angle of the picture doesn't quite match the angle of the monitor, so I'm going to set this to be distort, and we're going to grab the distort function and just have it conform to match the angle of the monitor. And click Done. So now we've got me talking with those two graphics. Now, in this case, those graphics are still images, but you could do exactly the same thing with video. Just scale it and rotate it and distort it so it fits inside the monitor to match the angle the monitor is to the camera. The other thing to keep in mind about chroma key is that how the foreground is lit is irrelevant to how the background is lit. The two of them are separate. The background needs to be bright around 50% on the waveform, needs to be evenly saturated, evenly lit with a nice rich color to lock onto. But the foreground can be anything. So here I've got Andrew looking suspicious. We'll apply the keyer and let's go to Dark City. We're going to blur this a bit. Not a lot of blur, Larry. There we go. Right about there. And now we'll take Andrew, and let's just move him forward. There we go. Then we'll go to the key and go down to where it says Matte Tools, and we'll just shrink it just a little bit to get rid of that edging that's there, and we're done. Finally, there's one more kind of key I want to show you, and that's a two-color key. Where we have effects wiping from one color to another. How do we make this work? Well, because I've got two different chroma keys, we're going to create a compound clip. So select the chroma key clip and the first background. Go to File, New, Compound Clip. We'll take the default name. Double-click the compound clip to open it up. Put the playhead in the middle of the clip and select it. The top clip, the one on the, the higher layer. Go to keying and drag it in. And because blue is showing, it configures itself to work with blue. Then get out of the compound clip. Make sure green is showing. Apply the, the key again. And now when we play this back, the blue keys inside the compound clip, and then the green keys outside the compound clip. And we end up with a very interesting effect by using a compound clip and two different colors on the key. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar presenting Apple Final Cut Pro Power Tips. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 344. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software, and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.